Well, President-elect Trump is getting ready for tonight's rally in Wisconsin. You'll see it here live when he begins to speak. In the meantime, socialism is alive and well in the United States and getting more popular, according to polls. One group of socialist students are organizing a walkout on Election Day. The organizers, who call themselves Socialist Alternative, say this will send a message to President Trump. Uh, joining us now is Elon Axelbank. He's a junior at Northeastern University and is on the Socialist Students Organizing Committee. Uh, Elon, thanks a lot for coming on. So, thanks so much for having me, Tucker. Um, so the question, if you're a socialist, and by the way, I, I take your views seriously. I don't agree with them, but I don't think you're, you know, a lot of people agree with you. If you are a socialist cool. and you care about working people, but you also hate Trump, how do you square the fact that the majority of private sector union members, the very people you exist to help and stand up for, voted for Trump? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, the reality is, is a lot of people had to vote for Trump uh, for him to get elected, and I don't question that. Um, and, you know, he's now the president uh, of the United States of America, and we have to deal with that. But from our perspective in socialist students, uh, we're calling for a national day of student walkouts on January 20th, on Inauguration Day, in order to send the strongest possible message starting on day one, that we uh, reject his agenda of, uh, you know, attacks on women and not letting women, you know, have the right to choose what to do with their body. His agenda of deporting millions of hard, you know, working class immigrants, uh, you know, working people like you're talking about. His agenda of forcing Muslims, uh, millions of peaceful, you know, genuine Muslims to register in this, uh, in this registry right. so that the government can monitor him. And we reject his corporate agenda, which will actually hurt um, a lot of working class people, and really the whole 99% oh, okay. as a whole. So what we're doing is calling for students to walk out of classes and join protests uh, in their cities on January 20th to send that message um, that, and, and build, you know, step one in the process but of I'm, building I'm a movement uh, to but resist But I'm confused Trump. about the message. So if you're a socialist, you're sure. primarily interested in changing our economic policy, and I read your website, and you say that you're young people who see the crisis of student debt, our declining living standards are entirely based uh, on capitalism. It's a system that exploits the many for the benefit of a few. I get it. But again, yeah. back to my first question, a lot of people voted for Trump, but they were largely, overwhelmingly working class people, the very people you say you're here to represent and help. Have you thought at all about why that is? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, the dominant feature um, of this whole election, not just the general election, but uh, going back, I mean, this election has been longer than I think a lot of us would have preferred it to be, you know, about a year and a half. I think the dominant feature of this was a mood, you know, an anti-establishment mood. People are upset with the way things are going, including myself and certainly a lot of, you know, working people, uh, young people and students. Um, and so I think people were looking for a change and a lot of people voted for Trump because they thought, you know, he was saying he was going to drain the swamp, change the system. He's talking about Washington insiders, right? He's talking right. about, you know, the political establishment. And, and these are a lot of things that I agree with. I do think there's Washington insiders. But from my point of view, what we need is, is anti-corporate candidates, anti-racist okay, candidates, anti-sexist well, candidates. They anti put forward not candidates. a message of division, but a message of unity based on the 99 percent opposing our common okay. enemy, which, okay. you know, we in social students see as, as the 1 percent. But wait a second, who did the 1% support in this election? Who did every CEO, the entire tech community, all of finance, all of them were against Trump? And by the way, who's in favor of the mass immigration that you claim to support? It's businesses, because they want cheaper labor. They don't want immigrants to come in well, to certainly. make America more diverse. They want them to come in and work for cheap wages. Do you see the connection at all and why you're abetting that? Cer certainly a lot of, certainly a lot of you know, corporate CEOs and whatnot endorsed Hillary, and this is because Hillary you know, was a Wall Street friendly candidate. But, but that's, a, that's actually not true, what you're saying. I mean, if you look at Trump's appointments on the past two days, he just appointed the CEO of ExxonMobil, one of the most major uh, gas companies um, the in the country and actually the world, too. Yep, that he just appointed him as Secretary of State, he, you know, the CEO of Goldman Sachs is now no, in his cabinet. No, cabinet. But you're so dodging what you're saying my, you're isn't totally true. No, but here's what is no, true. No, not really. He, he has appointed a bunch of corporate people, for sure. But on the question of immigration, yeah, so they mass, low-skilled, low-wage immigration, business mm. is for that. You're for it, too. Mm. Why do you think they're for it? Because they want to see a more complicated tapestry? No, because their labor costs decline when they import low-skilled people who will work for less whom they can exploit. Right. And that's why one of the key things that socialist students calls for 
is, is a $15 an hour minimum wage for all workers because anybody who works, anybody who contributes to society deserves to have a living wage. So I don't accept this argument uh, that if workers come from another country, that should allow corporations to drive down wages. The reality is, is that every but single person who works, whether you're Elon. a student okay, or, yeah, or a working person with a family, that you should have a living wage. There's, okay, that's fine and no one disagrees with that, but there is massive unemployment in the middle of the country, massive, and a higher rate for yep. men than during the Great Depression. If you bring in more workers, will there be more or less employment? There will be less employment, more people competing for fewer jobs. This is basic economics. How can you as a socialist be for that? What we need is, what we need is jobs programs. And the reality is, is that oh, you know, appointing a CEO, what the reality is, is that appointing you know, a CEO of Goldman Sachs as our, you know, as our not finance advisor, somebody who would, rejects the concept of the minimum that. wage. Look, I'm taking you seriously, and you're just repeating dumb liberal talking points. Be a socialist. Be no. a radical. Open your mind. I'm serious. You're not a socialist. You're a lifestyle liberal who's upset about the same boring rich people topics. Look at the economics of it. And you know what I mean? You may I'm not looking come at the economics. I feel like you're trying to get us distracted. The, the key message no. is that young people, you know, high, the majority of high schoolers couldn't even vote for Donald Trump because they weren't old enough. But Donald Trump's policies of deporting immigrants, okay. making Muslims right. register, attacking women's right. rights, right. these things are going to affect high schoolers Those are just and young people. Points. You know what? The one thing about no. socialists is they're kind of interesting. Elon, open your mind. We're out of time, unfortunately, I'm being told we've got to stop. But I appreciate your coming on. Thank you.